Guillermo Rigondeaux made history again, even though he was 40 years old, and you could consider him a shock fighter to what he really used to be. However, that didn't stop him from making history, becoming a two-time world champion at two different weight classes. Of course, he was the boogeyman, aka the most feared that we awarded him on split decision as the fighter who is the most feared of the past decade. Without any question, I mean, Rigan Diaz, he had fighters moving up on weight in order to avoid him. And when I say fighters, I mean every single champion that was around his division. Because around that time when Rigan Diaz beat Donaire, who are according to Max Kellerman, if he fight Mayweather and he was in the same weight division as Mayweather, Donaire will be the favorite. And Rigan Diaz outclassed him so bad that he made Donaire look like a nobody. So that being said, Rigan Diaz is definitely a legendary fighter and he deserved this opportunity. And I hate and I oblige him for giving Rigan Diaz another chance. And Rigan Diaz still captured the moment, even though he was just a shell of himself. That being said, Rigan Diaz won a split decision over Solis. I'm sorry if I mispronounced his name. He gave a good account of himself. He was a former champion. So once again, congratulations to Rigan Diaz. He made history with a split decision win. And of course, we have to talk about this subject in particular tomorrow on Split Decision Live every Sunday is a boxing slash talk show. So of course, join us. We're going to talk about Rigan Diaz and his future plans, maybe against the Ananui. Now, that being said, let me get the facts out of the way because of course, Rigan Diaz fought at 118. And Rigan Diaz yesterday got asked, how can you make 118 at 40 so easy? And Rigan Diaz responded by stating that this is really his natural weight. 122 is too big for him. And they had Rigan Diaz moving up almost three weight divisions to fight Lomachenko. And Lomachenko said, absolutely not for a catch weight. However, he wants to fight Inui at 126, according to Bob Aaron. So that's a bad look on Lomachenko's behalf for not fighting Rigan Diaz at least at 126 when Rigan Diaz was challenging him. So that being said, people been taking advantage of Rigan Diaz. They ruined his boxing career. They did him dirty. He the most mistreated fighter in the past decade, in my opinion. And he even had his own promoter shitting on him. I'm talking about his own promoter. So you already know how far they went. They went far and beyond. So Rigan Diaz is finally getting his just due. Of course, he a shell of himself when he fought Sosa tonight. You can see in the first round, he's trying to please the fan. But that's one thing you shouldn't do at 40 years old. It's fight different than you normally do. Fight in a way that you're not comfortable to please the fans that never gave a damn. That's not what you do. What's more important is your health. Rigan Diaz should be pleasing himself at this point and his pocket. So that being said... I was so mad that he was fighting in the pocket, not moving his head. It, he looked like he was a shot fighter to me. Then in the second round, I was telling, professing him. Of course, I was watching the fight with my man. And I was telling, professing him the whole time that Rigan I need to box. Professor Nim told me, well, he's a shot fighter. He lost his leg. But I'm not asking him to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee when he used to be like that in the Olympics. I'm talking about just move around instead of leaning on the front foot, being a sitting duck for your opponent, giving your opponent all type of opportunities and openings for punches like uppercuts and hooks. And obviously, Rigan Diaz wasn't moving his head. However, it didn't take too long for Rigan Diaz to come back to his senses, realizing this is the wrong fight. And in the second round, he made the adjustments because his last fight and the way he fought Lomachenko, and I know he moved up two-way divisions, but he still fought the wrong fight trying to sit in the pocket with Lomachenko when he should be moving around, creating angles, counter. That's the Rigan Diaz that we know that's the best Rigan Diaz, especially at 40 years old. 
you cannot teach an old dog new tricks. So that being said, Regan Dia came to his senses in the second round and finally started fighting back like how he used to be. And he started discouraging Solis. Now, don't get me wrong, Solis came to fight. You can see Regan Diao, just like Holyfield stated, when you reach your 40s and Father Time kicks in and it's knocking on the door, you see an opening, but you can't capture the moment and take advantage of it how you used to be. Because guess what? Father Time is undefeated. So Regan Diao is really a shell of himself, but how good he is, his boxing IQ, how smart he is, it got him the victory tonight. So that being said, I'm happy for that. Regan Diao redeeming himself, retiring while his head is up high. That being said, I would love to see Regan Diao versus Inui. Of course, Regan Diao watched Donaire when Donaire was in his prime. When Donaire was supposedly better than Inui at the time. He was competing with Mayweather, Pacquiao, Sergio Martinez as pound for pound number three. And Regan Diao watched him. Meanwhile, Donaire, after a couple losses... He gave Inui a good fight. Matter of fact, it was the fight of the year. So let's see a watch version of Regan Dia versus Inui in his prom. Let's see if Inui could stop Regan Dia or if even Regan Dia could pose a puzzle for Inui that he can't solve even at 40 years old. I would love to see it. Hopefully it get made. Bob Arum, of course, he probably want none of that. Because it's more of Regan Diao weight and his punching power is real as we saw tonight. Regardless of any of that, of course he's a one-handed fighter almost. Because at one point he will catch Salsa with a couple left hands. And if you throw a right hook, it will set up another left hand. But instead he will pull back and throw another left. Which is kind of an amateur move. But that's what you get when you stay an amateur for like two decades. Regardless of that, he was one of the best amateur boxers of all time and one of the best pros. However, boxing did him dirty, and I will never forget that. That being said, he's one of the top fighters on the coincidental list, and that's fighters that have been mistreated. Not for what he did, but for what he looked like. That's what's wrong with the sport, and people in general that have an issue being uncomfortable about themselves. That being said, uh, subscribe below if you're trying to get smarter by the minute. If you're trying to get dumb about a second, don't I listen to these decafs slash old media. Shout out to DBN for starting the new media wave. And obviously, if you're a casual fan and you're tired of being a casual fan and keep getting fooled by these promoters or whoever it is that's keep fooling you and you don't no longer want to be fooled, then attend the IQ University every Sunday live on Split Decision. Is a boxing debate slash talk show and hopefully one day you will graduate and become a hardcore and of course attending the IQ University is for free all you have to do is click on the notification bell to get notified every time we post or go live on split decision follow my man lunatune for the funniest boxing memes i will leave his link in the description box below keep it a g and follow my man on ig and follow me too at IQ tv and Welcome to the Boxing Brotherhood, the Boxing Universe. Hopefully, y'all enjoy the ride and to be continued on the next episode of Aki Aki A TV. Peace and we out. A la otra, la de al lado, y que vengan las monjitas que no se hayan bautizado. Oye, sí, para que prueben el pecado, me.